guys, I'm Joan. And I'm Joanita. And you are students of Ghana Christian International High School. And we urge you all to subscribe to His Love TV. Thank you. Bye. Hello there. You are welcome to His Love TV. Um, before we begin with today's discussion, I would like to remind you to subscribe to the channel um, if you have not done so. And if you have subscribed, to, we thank you very much for your support. Um, so this channel is basically um, dedicated to the teaching of senior high school um, subjects like history, CRS, English language, um, social studies, and more other subjects are going to be added very soon and also government as well. Um, so today we are looking at um, history SHS3 and um, we, in our last video lesson that we did, should in case you have not watched that, I would include the link in the description so that you go and, and watch that video. Um, we learned about the formation of the CPP, the Convention's Proposed Party. Um, um, in the, I mean, which was founded somewhere in 1948. And um, we looked at the, the aims and some of the members or the founding members of the UGCC, even though we know the most popular of them was Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, who um, happens to be the, the founder of the CPP. So we did look at some of the, 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 the aims uh, of the CPP, their achievement, and some of their failures as well. So like I said, I'll include a link in the description uh, under this video so you can watch and go and of course watch before you even come and watch this one so that you can understand um, certain things. So today I want us to look at why Nkrumah left the UGCC to form his own party, the Convention's People's Party. <clears throat> Sorry, you know, um, we, we established that Nkrumah at a point left the UGCC um, the party that invited him over from overseas to come and um, do the work as a full-time um, secretary or general secretary left or resigned from the CP, uh, the UGCC. So what were some of the um, the reasons that accounted for Nkrumah's um, decision to resign from the UGCC? And that is going to be our sub um, topic for today reasons for increment breakaway from the UGCC party. So let's begin with our lesson objective. So it's quite simple. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain the reasons that led to increment breakaway from the UGCC. And we all know the story uh, of about how increment came to be associated with the UGCC. And therefore, I mean, we are familiar. If you're not familiar with it, I have um, lessons on them. You can go back, go through um, the SHS playlist, SHS 3, and you'll get access to some of them. So let's look at the reasons. But before we look at the reasons, let's take a look at the introduction. So we are aware that Nkrumah um, resigned from the UGCC uh, to form his own party, the CPP. And the CPP was um, founded on 12 June um, 1949. Uh, yeah, 12 June 1949. So a year after the... 1948, um, disturbances occurred or had happened. And that was when um, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, um, after the rout, formed his um, party or political party. And so the question is, why did Nkrumah resign from the UGCC? And you know, this um, discussion is quite controversial um, because I have had friends who would tell you that Nkrumah resigned because of his own selfish interest. Uh, because he wanted to be popular among them. You know, some people even go as far as saying that Nkrumah was um, disrespectful um, for, for, for not obeying the, the, the old guards who brought him from um, abroad or from the diaspora. And so, yes, today we will look at some of the reasons and you can have your own opinion as to why he left. But you can, if you also have any um, contribution or addition, you can also do that in the comment section. So let's see if some of these assertions that I have talked about were really true, that Nkrumah actually was selfish, that is why he left the UGCC. So let's take a look at our lesson objectives. The first one, or the first reason that accounted for Nkrumah's the, 
um, um, resignation from the UGCC was ideological um, differences, um, ideological um, differences. And this was one of the major um, reasons that um, made Nkrumah to leave the UGCC party. You know, d during, this, I mean, during this era or period that we are talking about, it was almost the era of the Cold War where the capitalist bloc, of course, that is the U.S., and the socialist or the communist bloc that has to do with Russia were fighting for influence on, 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 on the African continent or even in the world at large, you understand? And so that time, I mean, it looks more or less like every country had to decide where to be, whether to belong to the capitalist bloc, the USA, or to belong to the Eastern Bloc, that is the Soviet Union, all right? And so, uh, Nkrumah, even with all these, adopted a non-aligned, you know, a non-aligned stand. Of course, you I know you, have, you might have heard it before, the non-aligned movement, whereby he said, he advocated that African countries should not join any of these blocs, because when you join one, um, you are going to be um, targeted by the other block, and so Africans should be non-aligned. Non-aligned means that deal with these two um, super um, um, powers, all right? And so that was the stand of Nkrumah at a point. But, you know, Nkrumah was influenced, he was much attached to the Marxist and the Leninist uh, ideologies, and some other, of course, communist ideologies as well, which the UGCC did not um, um, like, you know, the UGCC were more inclined to the West because they, 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 they love the, they, at, at, I mean, I think that they have established, at that time, they had established some sort of cordial relationship between they themselves as being lawyers, you know, Chebi Dankwa, Kufuado, Bechebi Lamte, these were big time men in the country at that time. So I believe that they had been able to um, um, forge some sort of relationship, some cordial relationship between them and the British. Uh, and so they were so much inclined to do with the British part, that is the capitalist bloc. But Nkrumah felt that the capitalist ideology was not um, the right way to go. He would rather prefer the communist because the communist prefers uh, a classless society, but the capitalist only is interested in of course, a society with class, the rich and the poor, whereas the communist ideologies was not like that. And so that became a clash between Nkrumah and the, um, the, the guards of the UGCC. So the, the leadership of the UGCC were mostly uh, moderate, whilst Nkrumah was um, um, radical. You know, everything had to be done and must be done now. And so Nkrumah became more um, radical, while the UGCC people were more or less moderate, you know, let's take it. And so that is what, 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 what um, transpired between the two. Actually, when you listen to, I, I listened to the daughter of Pa Grant who um, narrated um, about the uh, um, Nkrumah's um, letters to the Soviet Union, which was discovered by the um, members of the UGCC, especially um, J.B. Dankwa. And he, she, according to the woman, she said, J.B. Dankwa um, asked Nkrumah why he was writing to the Soviet Union because they were not dealing with the Soviet Union. And that even began, I must say, that began uh, the, 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 the tense you know, relationship between Nkrumah and um, J.B. Um, Dankwa. So this ideological differences was a big, big, big issue with that of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and the UGCC. Good. So let's take a look at the next one reason for the breakaway of um, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. What's the differences in approach? What's the differences in approach? So differences in the approach to what? Differences in the approach to attaining independence or achieving independence for the Gold Coast. So the UGCC had their approach, their method um, that they had considered appropriate for the Gold Coast to adopt, to uh, attain independence for the country. And so this approach was that they were going to use constitutional legalities, all right? 
and that is why they self self that's why they said self government in the shortest what um, possible time all right so um in the shortest possible time we are going to be free uh but in the meantime we are going to adopt constitutional legalities these people were lawyers and so they wanted everything to be penned down you know to be written down let's follow the laid down procedures um uh, to achieve our cause you know that is why mostly some people say that the npp today who are remnants of the ugcc are um, more or less paper paper everything is paper let's go the constitutional way you know because they had learned governance and all of that however Nkrumah, um on the other side felt that this approach to um attaining independence or achieving independence will only delay um um, the quest for the country's uh, gain of independence. And therefore, he felt that we should use a more radical approach. And radical approach here means that we want independence now, you know, independence uh, now, self-government now. So it's like you are in the house with your mom, and your mom tells you, of course, you, are, um, you ask your mom, mommy, I want, say, maybe one city to buy something. And your mom tells you, of course, you are, oh, wait, uh, let me go to work and come. Then you tell the mother, no, if you don't give me to me now, I am not going to school. I'll stop going to school. Your mom is trying to tell you, you go to school and come back. Then you tell your mom, I'm not going if you don't give me the one gun. That is a radical approach. Uh, maybe another brother of yours or sibling of yours may say, okay, I hear. If I, if I come back from school, I'll collect it. That is a more moderate approach. So Nkrumah's own was independent now. And if independent now, then we are going to force you to give us independence. We are going to use strikes. We are going to use demonstration. We are going to boycott a lot of things. We will not buy a lot of your imported items. Then uncompromising steps. We are not going to, uh, you know, listen to any stories that you may have for us. All right? Everything is we want it now. And, you know, this Nkrumah at this time was... I mean, at his youthful age, 30s, all about. And these UGCC members were more, almost, I mean, 40, 45, 50. So you know how the old men, you know, behave. They don't want things in a radical way, like the way a youthful, you know, the way a youth would, would want it. And therefore, that approach, that approach that Nkrumah was trying to adopt um, was also not um, 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 liked by the 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 leaders of the UGCC and, that, and therefore it also became a problem between Nkrumah and these leaders. Good. So let's look at the next one. Now again, another important reason why Dr. Kwame Nkrumah broke away, uh, broke away from the UGCC to form his own party, the CPP, was the fact that um, uh, after the 1948 route, uh, he was excluded from the COSI committee, all right? From the COSI committee. He was excluded from the COSI committee. Um, so what was the COSI committee about? You recall that after the 1948 route, and should, in case you have not watched that, I have the video in there. You can check on the page. After the 1948 route, um, um, uh, the... The Watson Commission, the commission was set up under the chairmanship of Aiken Watson. So the Watson Commission came up with certain um, findings and recommendations uh, as to some of the reasons for the, the causes of the, of the rapt. And one of the, the reasons that came up was that the 1946 Alambans Constitution was, was not meeting the aspirations of the people as at that time. And even the educated elite um, would describe that constitution as um, outmoded at birth, all right? And so the Watson Commission recommended that a new constitution should be drawn for the Gold Coast or should be drafted for the Gold Coast. And that ended up, of course, we, we have already said that um, the recommendations of the Watson Commission were accepted by the, um, by the British governor. And so if a new constitution should be um, um, drafted and it has been accepted by the British governor, then there was a need for them to set up a committee um, to actually um, begin with the work on the new constitution. Now, interestingly, Gerard Grisi, who was then the governor at that time, um, appointed, I mean, all Ghanaian committee 
all Ghanaian committee members to, 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 you know, to go around the country and draft a new constitution for the country, a constitution which he believed would meet the aspirations of the people. And so, um, 39, no, um, 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 Gerard Grissi appointed Henley Kosi, and Henley Kosi was a, 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 Ghanaian, a Ghanaian lawyer. So he appointed Henley Kosi to be the chairman, and that is how come we, we, we termed the, the committee as the Kosi committee. So Henley Kosi, he was the chairman. Now, the committee was made up of 39 Ghanaians, all Ghanaians, 39. And these Ghanaians were made up of uh, people from the religious stance, the clerk, uh, of course, the clerk, um, the religious bodies, people from, uh, of course, businessmen, lawyers, and most importantly, including five of the um, big six who were arrested um, after the 1948 route. But interestingly, Nkrumah was not appointed to be part of that um, committee, even though Nkrumah was part of the five people who, had, who, who, who have been appointed here. Um, um, Nkrumah was part of them. They were all arrested. But when it came to um, the, 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 the drafting of a new constitution for the Gold Coast, Nkrumah was exempted from that. I don't know how you will feel if you were to be in the shoes of Nkrumah because for, and at this period, don't also forget that Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was very famous. Um, he, 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 I mean, people knew him. And so there wasn't any need for you to, for you to, you know, do away with him. Uh, because you are inviting people from the from from I mean from religious bodies and all of that. Well, I don't know why they decided not to include him. But hey, um, they appointed the 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 big six um, of course miners in Kruma, and Kruma was not part um, to work on the constitution. Now, when the 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 names of the committee came up, people felt that the the older men in the UGCC had betrayed um, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Um, because he was part of them. So you remember I told you that it was the youth that even urged Nkrumah to, to resign from the UGCC because they felt that um, Nkrumah had been betrayed all right, by um, the older men um, for, for excluding him. And so that was quite, quite unfortunate. I, I still don't know why they decided to exclude him, but I'm thinking that because of his um, radical approach, and all of that, they, they try to do that. And so this um, committee was uh, responsible for the, um, the drafting of the 1951 um, um, Kosi Constitution, or the Edin Clark Constitution. I also have the features of that constitution on this page. You can go there and go and watch. Um, again, um, increment suspension, the last for part one was increment suspension from the UGCC. Now, increment was um, suspended at a point um, from the post of the general um, secretary um, of the UGCC, okay, and its refusal to reinstate him, of course, despite the demands by the committee of youth organization, uh, led anger and frustration at the grassroots um, level party, who, of course, pressurized the young men uh, in the UGCC to urge Nkrumah to break away. So you see, Nkrumah had formed a certain uh, youth wing in the UGCC known as the Committee uh, of Youth Organization. And these people were very loyal to Dr. Kwame Nkrumah because they could really easily identify themselves with him because he was youth, I mean, he was young and they were also young. And so when they suspended Nkrumah at a point because of his activities with the Soviet Union, these young men urged Nkrumah um, to, to resign from the party and form his own um, political party. Um, that we called, of course, we were calling these guys veranda boys because they were young and they were so radical. Uh, and you know that is how it is because um, today, if you if you if you ask uh, any any young, um, I mean, blood, what we should do to the current government, I don't think that they will tell you we should go to constitution, we should do blah blah. No, let's go and take him out. You know, that kind of youthful exuberance. That was what the the CYO was exhibiting. So. He was suspended, and they, it, it, it even got to a time they were about to actually dismiss him, but then he was advised um, to resign honorably. Good, so let's take a look at the last one, and then we will bring our discussions to an end for today. 
um, Increment ambition and that of the UG60 stance. You know, Increment had an ambition um, that he came with, um, even though when he was in the diaspora, he was still agitating for um, uh, African unity, um, attending various Pan African, um, um, of course, conferences. Okay, so the UGC do not like increments of militancy. You know, uh, Increment established that um, committee, uh, right? The committee that I told you about, the Committee on Youth Organization, that is the CYO. This thing, this um, organization or youth wing was established by Dr. Kwame and um, to, of course, to support him. Moreover, um, he also established the Accra Evening Newspaper. This was also a newspaper that Nkrumah established. Now, all these two developments were done at the blind side of the UGCC leadership. So the, the, the leaders of the UGCC were not informed they knew nothing about these things that Nkrumah was doing and so these activities came to confirm you know the fears of the leaders of the UGCC that Nkrumah actually wanted to um, make himself more popular um, at the expense of the elected leaders and this was something that these leaders did not like because you know you were young and Nkrumah was very young and we, we were even the one who paid your trip from abroad to come. And so you can't do things on your own anyhow without um, informing us, okay? And so these um, older men in the UGCC felt that this small boy, in quote, um, wants to use us as a platform to uh, make himself popular and probably do something that um, I don't know about. And so that is how the UGCC felt as at that time. And so there was so much controversies um, between these two parties. So eventually, Nkrumah had to resign um, to form his own party. Good. So this um, brings us to uh, the end of our lessons for today. Of course, our try work will be for you to try and explain some of these um, reasons. In our next lesson, we shall look at after the formation of the, UG, uh, the CPP, um, a new election. So the 1951 constitution, the Kosi constitution, recommended that an election should be held in the Gold Coast. And that is going to be the first election to be held in the Gold Coast, 1951 election. And um, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's party, as well as the party of his great-great-grandfather, the UGCC, would all be in action to contest for that election. So I'll bring you the outcome of the 1951 election and, of course, subsequent events that occurred um, in our next um, lesson. Have a nice day. Smart TV, first of all, Bye.